we're live. We did it. Finally. Success. Emily, you are a rock star for bearing with us. We have Emily Mantai on the show today. How did I do on the last name? Montai. Montai. Emily Montai on the show. She is an American-born filmmaker. Where were you from? Hailing from where? Living, Living in How long now? Uh, I've been in Berlin just since January, since the beginning of this year. Since the beginning of this year. Okay. And you just made an awesome film. You were nominated by David Buchanan, a filmmaker on The Last Play It Forward. And he had an awesome film, too. I want to get right. Yes, that's it. Prime Location. Prime Location. I, yeah, great film. I love that. That was a great film, right? It was, like, so topical and so uh, of the zeitgeist of now. Um, yeah. It was, it was also it, so David. <laughs> it was, yeah. um, and it's really interesting to go from his film which is so like current events, what's going on in our life and in the you know water and what we're all kind of dealing with and suffering from and trying to reconcile with your film that places us squarely in the past and in a history that we're trying to reconcile and in memories and in traumas and how do we move on from that. And your film is uh, appropriately titled um, because it's a challenge to do what you're biting off um, spiritually, emotionally, as well as narratively, filmmaking, technically wise. Uh, Bergangen Heights, the Baltagung. And it only took me like... Quite good. Very good, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. I appreciate it. I'll leave it to you. I'll pass the mic to you to let us know what it means. And I know the title and the complexity of the title is intentional. Um, and it has a lot of weight and meaning, so I'll let you uh, tell the good people all about it. And uh, I will say it translates loosely into remainder into English. Yeah, that was the title I chose in English. Um, for Gangenheit's Bewaltigung is, uh, I was telling a friend of mine who lived in Germany for a long time about the concept of the movie, and he said, oh, there's a German word for that, because of course there's some weird long comp uh, compound German word for everything. Uh -huh. uh, Vergangenheits means the past, and Die Waltigung is, uh, is about coming to terms with or dealing with something. And this word is specifically used in reference to coming to terms with Germany's 20th century past, both world wars, the Holocaust, um, the divided Germany, all of the sort of trauma of uh, German society for almost 100 years. Um, and that is Vergangenheits Die Waltigung. And because there are so many uh, scars and pieces, like behind you, pieces of the wall, literally, um, all over the city of Berlin, and these weird reminders everywhere, I thought remainder was a good way to translate that into, into English for people who got sick of calling it, as all my friends do, Emily's movie. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is any easier for them, but uh, uh, I guess for the German friends that you have, certainly. Um, so that takes us right to the first question is why this film for you? Why go to all the lengths that you have to go to as a filmmaker? And this film is just, it's beautiful. It's beautifully shot, beautifully acted. The timing and pacing of it is super thoughtful and super, um, uh, I don't know if, you know, transcendent is a fair word, but I think it probably is. Um, That's a pretty, pretty big compliment, thank you. Yeah, there's certainly <laughs> moments in the film that are that, and that's, I think, you know, like the highest aim for all of us filmmakers. Um, so why this film? Why go through all of that to get what you're um, Well, I, uh, I come from a, a family that's very proud of our German. And, you know, I grew up in the United States. My parents and grandparents did. It's my great grandparents who came from the Prussian Empire and were German. And, um, but through the history of my family, it's always been a really proud thing to say that we're German. We have German ancestry, German roots. 
there have always been these really specific things that you know we think are great about Germans: timeliness, uh, um, potatoes, <laughs> just really um, German stereotypes. Uh, but when I when I first uh, moved to Europe several years ago and got to know some Germans, I realized it's not. Germans don't say things like, I love being German. Germany is the greatest country in the world. You know, Germans are great. Uh, there's a lot more baggage to do with being German. Uh, and in the, in the thought that this baggage comes from people my age are not, um, are not particularly responsible for, uh, you know, the, for the communist regime that took over East Germany. They're not responsible for the Holocaust. They didn't do those things. They weren't even alive when a lot of those things happened, yet they as much in their identity as I take on, you know, liking potato salad because of my German identity. Um, or, you know, these, these things from the past that we take on as, as part of our cultural identity, I found really interesting totally get that and but I suspect you know that there must have been a time in your upbringing where you came to the rude awakening that oh my god it's not all you know bratwurst and uh, beer um, but there's this ugly darkness and how did that affect you prior to even moving? Yeah. I think it's pretty easy to to segregate to separate yourself from that and to say like oh my family also wasn't a part of that. They didn't, you know, they came to the United States in 1901. Before either of the world wars, they weren't complicit in this German guilt that exists. And so that, I think, that's another thing, just kind of realizing that that's an accident almost of my birth, that even though I have like a line that is German, that my family doesn't share in the guilt of the uh, of the German identity is kind of just an accident of time, um, and it's an easy that. way to separate things. But yeah, it's it's, it's also an easy way to say to you know to understand how people separate themselves from bad things in their family. So that's how you distanced it in your mind. You said, well, my immediate ancestors weren't there. But then when you got to Berlin, it, it got even closer for you and more real. And you're looking at these people that are just like you, your age, your peers, but they weren't born with the distance that you did have. And mm -hmm. their, their parents, their grandparents were immediately accountable. And so how do they, that you wanted to, to understand what? Yeah, how that how that weight affects them, and where they're going, where they're going now. Because, like I said, everywhere in Berlin there are these, there are memories. There's actually um, there are actually stones in the pavement that don't fit in that are called tripping stones because you have to trip over them. To you know, you will trip over them, and you will kind of remember as you as you trip. Um, just that's just one of the many things that wow. exists in Berlin, along with pieces of the wall at various places, memorials. Um, the city you have all of these reminders of the past. So living, I I discovered that living with that or having that be part of your life is um, is something interesting. And when I started to talk to Germans about like what is this, what is it like? You know, what does it feel like? Um, they were saying, you know, it's it's time to move on. Like we realize that we need to remember this, but it's also time for us to move on. And that was really the uh, that um, for my character and for the film. Yeah, and that leads us to the second question: is you know, what did you want to say, or what did you want to explore, and prompt you, and maybe even prod you? You know the as I mentioned to you earlier, you know, our goal on this show is really our goal as filmmakers to be as you know vulnerable as we can and to make something as honest and truthful as we can. And, you know, looking, thinking, reflecting on your film, talking to you several times, you know, it seems to me that, you know, the question, again, second question of the show is, 
um, what did you want to say? What did you want to explore? And I know it's often hard to even know that sometimes when you're making the film, you only in retrospect kind of get to see what it is. And my take is, is that there's something you wanted to do. There's, there's some healing that you wanted to create. And there's some, there's some sympathy that you have towards your counterparts. And there's something that you wanted to give them. And, and is that accurate? And what, what do you think of that? And, yeah, I, I, I think that maybe wasn't part of my intention when I started, but maybe more part of my, like part of, you know, what comes later. But I think it was always my intention to say the past is what shapes us and kind of tells us about what we should do now. But the, but the past doesn't have to um, shape the future. The past doesn't have to uh, negate what we can do in the future. We do have the opportunity to build our own future. So that was kind of always where I wanted to go with, this, with the story of the film and with the, the ending of the film, leaving it a little bit ambiguous. Does he look at the file or not? But, um, but still saying like, th there's a future and the future is not in just, you know, just carrying around this guilt from the past, but actually learning for it from it. And that's something that I think is really important to me in general in my life and in films as well. I love to incorporate things from the past into the present day and say, how can we learn from this? How can we take something horrible that's happened or something, you know, just in history that's a fact and, um, and learn from it and uh, carry it positively into the future. And, and healing is definitely part of that for sure. Yeah. And, you know, meditating on this film in the process and in retrospect, what do you feel is the process of balance where you have a healthy appreciation as a human person or not, uh, whether it's, you know, the atrocities of the Holocaust and World War I, II, and um, separate, divided Germany, or a personal uh, scar that one has in their psyche. What is that process? What is that balance? What is that truth? to find peace with it without ignoring it, learning from it, and yet moving on. Yeah, I mean, I guess if I really knew that, I would be like the world's greatest psychologist, but <laughs> I'd help everybody heal their everything. But I think it's a little bit individual for everybody how, how to deal with your own past and how to incorporate it in who you are and not not just try to bury it or um or um not forget all about it because uh, i think we that's a way we often repeat the same mistakes is just by um pushing things down and not remembering them well, I, I agree with you. I definitely think those processes are critical in terms of remembering, moving on, the balance between the two, and living in the present and having the past inform the present in a way that is as healthy and empowering as possible and not debilitating. And I think a lot of it, for me, in your film, that's what's so great about art is that you know we can all come to it and experience something unique. Um, for me, you know, the seminal moments of the movie are hinge on that night out when they're reciting that poem by, um, I believe, uh, Fenton, what was, what's yeah, the poet's James name? James Fenton, he's, a, he's an English um, author. What's his name again, I'm sorry? Oh, his name is James Fenton, he's a lish author and poet. And I found that poem in uh, another book by James Kerr called Berlin Stories, which is a, which is Berlin, which is about um, detective stories before, during, and after the Second World War. A James Fenton poem just spoke to me so much because it the haunting spaces of memory, and he talks about how um, you can't. It's 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 not that you're going to forget it. It's how do you remember it? 
you know, the fact that you have to keep on remembering it is is just as kind of damaging like this kind of self um the the feeling the thought that you have to have some sort of self-hatred as well as damaging um and yet yet you create some sort of a, an eternal ritual to that suffering that kind of bridges that that um dichotomy yeah and th that line of living to find a ritual is for me a, a solution it's to me the key it's to me the way out the poem goes on and on and it's really quite a long poem and it goes on into ritual uh envisioning a funeral um process and with that line specifically oblivion should find a ritual that to me speaks of this this healing that is ritual that is burying the past that is a process of letting things seep into the earth and integrate and yet move on the living those above the earth move on walk on and they have that process that they can go to in order to heal themselves cleanse themselves on their on the, from the past and move on in the future and, um you know that's just a great part of the movie and i think there's something really um powerful in that message that for me is where the story really hangs yeah yeah i i really I really wanted that poem to be part of the story because I had thought about it a lot when I thought about writing the story. Um, and thankfully, James Fenton's uh, publishing people let me use it. It was very, very kind of them. It was it was awesome. The actors did a superb job. The directing was great, Emily. Well done. The writing was awesome. Um, the cinematography, wow, uh, awesome, awesome. Thank you for putting it out there. Oh, wait, I almost forgot. You had your third question. The third question, of course. Uh -huh. uh, what changed since you made it? Well, um, I, I think I went into the process having made a lot of short films before and not feeling like I've ever gotten the kind of success or the acceptance for my films that I wanted to. And, and a lot of them I've done for clients or, you know, somehow it's some, like I'm, I'm not the boss of me, even as a writer director. And I thought I want to do a film that is just purely something that I want to say, something that I want to do, supported by no one for no specific purpose, um, other than saying something that I want to say. And if this, doesn't break through to the world, then maybe I don't need to make films anymore. And so I kind of, I kind of went in with that mindset, but through the process of making the film, um, from, from the writing, from getting feedback from my writer's group, from the uh, production and having, finding that everybody on set had some sort of story that like about their family and their family history that related to the film or that they, they had taken something personal from it. And now, you know, having been rejected from a lot of film festivals, but having shown the film in really small venues and having people who watch it say to me how it affected them personally and how they got something from it, I kind of changed my mindset on why to make films. Yeah, I definitely want to make them for an audience and to touch people, but I don't really have the feeling that I need financial success or that I need film festival success or that I need any sort of outside accolades other than having audiences, however small they are, respond. So that definitely was a mindset change for me. I think that's such a profound growth as an artist and I think it can only liberate your art and I think the best kind of art has, is made like that with that in mind without any mercenary purpose. Um, around it. It's really just a pure uh, pouring of the intellect, heart, soul, mind, and um, all the amazing transcendent things that, you know, are there as human beings um, to us. So um, I think, uh, you know, it's definitely, I applaud you for, for not just, you know, reaching that level, which is uh, substantial, but to acknowledge it and share it 
with us and our audience because I think that's really bold and I think people need to hear that. I need to hear it. Filmmakers need to hear it. And I think that is the movement and the change that we can together promote and say, hey, this is what's valuable. Let's not forget why we want to do this, why we're suffering for, you know, making these works of art because there's a higher purpose in it that we believe in. Right. I think so many people, so many people that I've talked to are like, I just want to entertain people. I want to entertain an audience. And for me, I don't think that's enough. Right. That, that's not, that's not the entirety of the purpose. Right. For me. And, but also the entirety of the purpose isn't, I want to make a living off of this. And that's just as important because that is something that we are so focused on, you know, how do we Kickstarter this or, you know, yeah find an internet following or get funding, you know, it's, and sure, it's super hard to make films on your own with little to no budget and put your own money into it. But, um, that if you're not, if you're not not doing that because you want to do it, you know, if you're only doing it for some sort of financial remuneration, it just, it completely changes what your work is about. And also is super exhausting. Agreed. Yeah, you, makes me less yeah. excited about making things when I'm also about promoting them, or you know, when I put so much effort into being my own marketing PR expert. Totally agree. <laughs> Emily Montai, I did it. Yes, you did it. <laughs> Thank you, Emily Montai, so much. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. An honor to have you on the show. Thanks for making your movies. Thanks for sharing it with us. And thanks for sharing um, yourself with us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's so nice to talk to you. Thank you. Welcome. All right, Emily, um, I look forward to being in touch. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. That's the wrap of this uh, edition of Play It Forward. Hi, and her film, Fur Gangan Heights the Voltagon. Yes. <laughs> thanks, Emily. Bye. All right, bye. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in this week. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and leave us a like and or a comment. It makes a big difference. Play It Forward is brought to you by Digipops, where we're building a community to put film and filmmaker discovery in your hands. Here, filmmakers and fans, the creative class, recognizes each other fairly and transparently through a community-curated film festival each quarter. It's coming soon. Thank you.